Now this video is all about how I painted a realistic looking bird in watercolour. Now if you did miss part one, have a look to the top right hand corner of the screen and you find it there. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. I'm an online art tutor and I paint realistic wildlife, both animals and plants, in watercolour. Oh and also click on that subscribe button down below and then the bell icon, because once you do that, YouTube will notify you when I put another video here ready for you to watch. Now we'll start by painting the wing feathers, but the way we're going to do this is by using a wet in wet wash and then we're going to start adding a few little colours in at the same time, gently allowing them to blend on the wetness of the paper. So wet the paper, allow the water to soak in and then pop in your colours over the top. That way you should be able to control those colours with your brush at the same time, okay? So let me just get into that now and show you what I mean. Now I like to kind of wet one half of a feather at a time when I'm working on individual feathers like this one. And the reason why is because on this particular bird, you find the main central vein on the feather is a little bit darker towards the middle and gradually gets lighter as it goes towards the edge, as you can see here. So what I'm actually doing, I've wetted that little area first two or three times, dropped in a bit of colour towards the vein and then eased that out allowing it to blend and lighten naturally as it gradually blends into that damp paper. Now again with this little area, because I'm kind of skipping one feather at a time and that's because I don't want to get that feather too wet in the middle, you know? So do every other feather and by doing so it kind of helps you control the flow of water. Even though I've wetted this feather down first, I want that edge to be more broken up. So instead of painting more or less a line which goes from say 5 o'clock through to 11 o'clock direction the clock face okay this time what I've actually done is I've used the side of the brush and tap that line on to give like a broken edge to that feather effect so keep re-wetting that feather make sure it doesn't dry on you but you don't want it really really wet you don't want it running down the paper like a waterfall And then gently catching the internal edge, I know, catching that inside edge of that feather, of that line it was painted, pull it forward and add a bit more colour to that as well. So this is where you can gradually play with it. See, when you wet the feather, you find that it gives you a little bit more working time. So if you wet it two or three times, allow that water to soak in and you can see the effect that you get just from that. I've added a few little fine lines over the top as well, but I may add more to that as I go through the painting process. That's just, remember, those foundation layers. So start working on the other feathers. Think about the colours as well for here, because you've got to imagine that as the body is shaping round to the right hand side here, as it kind of goes around to the right, then you've got to consider the colours you're going to be using. If it's further away from the camera, the person that's taken the photograph, you might find those feathers in the background got to have a little bit of a blue hint to them as well. And that's because it's more, you well, know, it's more in the background as I say, so it's more, you need to give it more of a receding colour, hence using blue. So now for the second layer of the wash. Now by doing this, I'm going to re-wet half of a feather again, work into the central vein, and then adding that colour within there, and mixing the colours on the paper as well, instead of trying to mix them in your mixing palette. It's quite nice to do that. As long as the paper's damp enough, not soaking wet, remember, then that gives you the opportunity to kind of add these overlaying colours onto the paper for this burning watercolour. Now the thing with the tail feathers is that you've got to consider the way they overlap. So when you look at something like this one here, okay, looking on the screen, I can just about make it out, I know, is that these tail feathers overlap gradually one over the top of the other, it's like crossing your fingers, isn't it? But because they overlap, they cast a shadow on the underside of each individual feather and that shadow will kind of help you kind of depict that overlapping feel to each one. So make sure you put that little shadow in, darken underneath as well of your fine tip brush as you do so. So use the same technique for the tail feathers as well, exactly the same way. And I've gone for a darker mix of black and brown with a little bit of blue in there as well, just kind of cool it down just a touch. And by doing so, I was able to kind of go for the darker lines within the feathers, as you can see. See, when you add those contrasting colors, when you go for the darkest areas, that really brings that, the whole shape, the whole shape of it together. It really does, and starts to give some form um, for the bird itself. Now, 
Now when you're working underneath the wing, more towards the bottom of the bird, then you gotta allow the detail to kind of mix gradually and start off with those lighter lines to begin with. So that we've done here really. You start off pale and then you're gonna gradually get dark as you go along. Think about any shadows where the feathers overlay one another as well. Because those shadows are very important because obviously that will give you another feeling of another dimension within the feathers, within the layering of the feathers. See, this is especially quite um, obvious as well when you see the way that the wing overlaps the side of the body here. So therefore we're going to have a darker line or darker shadow in a way on those lower down feathers. Now when you're working on the chest, you've got to consider the length of the lines that's to begin with. Start off with a pale colour zone, gradually building up that depth of tone as you go through. And notice as well, it's actually a little bit, a little bit darker more towards the underside of the wing. So have it paler to the outside edge of the bird and darker towards the underside of the wing. Tiny, tiny lines, as I said, elongated crosses sort of thing, but small versions of them as you do so. And uh, just take your time. Now working on the chest, now there's obviously a bright orange colour. This is the first layer of colour, remember, we're going to put onto this chest. So I'm working with a, a more of an orange type colour, so orange and even red mixed with that. And I might occasionally as well for this kind of colour add a little bit of yellow to kind of really brighten it up. But we do want to compare this to that reference photo. Then at least then you know you've got it roughly about right. Because I know obviously photographs do vary in colour, don't they? So just bear that in mind. Now constantly keep thinking about the brush direction with this. Because all these little lines which I've already put on there, as you can see, have all gone by overlapping, but these are very short, tiny lines. have not gone too dark too soon, so I've started off with a very pale orangey-red colour, and I'm going to gradually build up on top of that colour as we go along, just by adding further layers. Then use a size 5 brush just to very lightly soften down some of these details. Now the thing when you paint the legs is that they're, one, very thin, very small I know, Work in pale washes to begin with, but try and keep those washes just inside the outline. So just inside, leaving a bit of a gap, because it's very easy to kind of make them too fat and too chunky. So add your washes in, just one layer at a time, starting with the weakest colour first. Then once we've got the washes on, we can darken underneath the legs and add the details over the top, just by mapping it out as well. So we'll go into that now, and I'll show you how I tend to do that. So we'll keep working down, and let's go for these little legs that we've got. So I'm going to start off once again by adding a very light wash of colour, very, very light wash of a grey blue colour, just so we've got something to work on top of really. But whilst it's wet, go back in into the damp paper, not soaking weather, and add another layer of the same colour over the top. By doing so, you can just kind of tweak the underside, all these areas which are going to be, you know, that kind of little bit darker where the light doesn't quite hit. So you've got to think about the light source coming from above or from the top left hand corner for example. Then you've got to consider that the way it comes down on the top of the leg. Now the reason why I think it's coming from the top left hand corner is because there isn't any shadow on the leg from the chest. If it's coming from the top right, obviously the chest will cast a shadow over this leg. A little bit of lemon yellow in there and then we can just add on anything else that we need to do just for this very basic wash. So now for the next layer. I'm going to go in with a slightly mid-tone colour which we've got and this mid-tone colour will allow me to kind of pick out some of the more finer details, the more, I don't know, shape really if you wish, as you look at the leg and the feet. This is also where you can map out all the individual sections on the toes, on the claws, all those different areas you've got to think about painting in. But do this now on dry paper. Okay, if you try to do it on wet paper, it could just blur. So make sure it's nice and dry when you start mapping out where all the sections go. Then once you've got all the sections mapped out, then you can start thinking about filling those sections in. 
So where we've got this outline edge underneath, we can start to think about adding the detail going down to that underside of this leg, remember, where it's going to be a little bit darker. And at least that way around, we can start adding detail to the darker, well, to the darker side, just underneath. Now finally, watercolour white. When you look at our bird, there's a lot of white around the eye and on the wings. Now, even though I very often say less is best with watercolour white, because it really is, in this case, I like to use a reasonable amount on this particular bird, but you've got to use it sparingly in the sense of just be careful where you place it. Don't overdo it. But I'll put a little link up there as well on how to use watercolour white. And I know you can use white gouache as well. So you can use that, watercolour white. Some people have used white acrylic. In fact, I've used white acrylic as well on the odd occasion on YouTube. But just make sure that you know, you don't use too much in one go. So less is certainly best when it comes down to using white. But there are certain instances and certain animals which we paint where you need to add that a little bit more than you would normally use. So look carefully at the reference photograph. Start adding the white highlights in or the white parts of the feathers. Every now and then though, get up, go and put the kettle on, make a coffee, step back and then come back in with fresh eyes and have a look at it again. Because at least that way around, if you're coming back with fresh eyes, very often you'll either see, oh, I put too much there, or there's not quite enough. So by doing that, taking a break, and then coming back to the painting, that will enable you to kind of readjust the watercolour white as we go along. Now, if you're really enjoying this video, please remember to click on like, subscribe, share, and if you please put a comment down below as well. Because all these interactions encourage YouTube to show my videos to more people. And this will allow my channel to grow and to teach even more budding artists. Now here I'm thinking about the outline or the very edge of each individual feather. And the way that light catches those edges. So working with a very creamy version of watercolour white. If it's not creamy, then you'll find it just go quite dull when it dries. You can start to add in these directional brush strokes to kind of replicate the feather direction within each individual feather. Even down to highlighting those little central veins as well. That's I quite like doing that because that really makes them stand out and those very edges in this particular case. Not all birds will have these white outlines around the edges of the feathers. So you must remember to check that reference photograph before you even start the painting. Just have a really good scan through it. Look closely at it if you've got it on an iPad. Zoom into that reference photograph and really look at these fine details. So working with the tail feathers, you can see I've got the watercolour white a little bit paler. So I've added more water basically to the white paint. And by doing so, the white won't be too bright. When it dries, I can then go over the top with another colour, but please let it dry first, otherwise you'll end up just blowing it away. If you do fancy painting this American Robin in full, then it is available obviously on my website. I'll continue adding these little highlights again underneath the wing, but once again, underneath the wing is quite dark, isn't it? It's like more of a mid-tone to dark colour. These are just the areas that kind of stick out from underneath the wing where the light just about catches them. I have noticed as well in that reference photograph the change of brush direction or in this case the change of the feather direction. So you can see the way that the feathers do change direction as well. So think about that clock face, okay? So think about the clock face. You're looking probably along the base here uh, from maybe 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock on a clock face. That kind of angle that these feathers go on. Then you've also got these little fine ones, I call them shorts on a bird, the ones that go over the top of the legs. I know they're like little shorts sometimes, but put those in, but make sure you flick out the ends of these. So start from the inside of the bird, then lift your brush off as you pull away. Work your way around the painting as well. Now I try to think about where I'm going to be using this paint to begin with. Because I'm left-handed, I want to work from the right hand or top right, i.e. from the top of the head really, down the back of the bird, doing the wings of the bird, the tail, underneath and then find the left hand side. By doing that, obviously what you find is that I'm not going to put my hand in the paint. You know, I've got a piece of paper underneath my hand there as you can see, but because I've got that piece of paper underneath, that, my hand isn't going to get the natural oils from my hand onto that watercolour surface. 
and because I'm working to the left hand side now I'm not having to put any pressure or weight on top of the main painting so I'm keeping well away from that area. This now allows me, because I don't have to go back up to the top, just to add these final white highlights on the legs and also the feet and those little sharp claws. So just to finalise the little bits on the legs, I just want to make sure that these stand out. You know, it's like I said before, is that you need to think about when the watercolour white dries, then if it's not bright enough, you can then go over the top with another layer. Once that is dry, you can then also go over the top of that, which is a small amount, a small amount of colour if you want to, say a little bit of cerulean blue, or whatever colour it's going to be, depends on what you're using the white for. Now when you overlay white paint with a colour, you've got to make sure that you only do it very lightly and in one pass only. So I'll continue with these tiny claws and the highlights on the claws. Now I may add a little bit more white over the top, I'll wait till it dries and see what it looks like. Now if you found my video helpful and has given you any tips for painting birds in watercolour yourself, please put a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you and any ideas that you have for painting birds in watercolour. Oh, and also look in the description down below because I've got some free videos on my website for you to have a go at. And whilst you're there, you can grab the free Sparrow PDF document, how to paint one all the way through. And on top of that, there's also another PDF on basic watercolour equipment. So I'll pop along there and get it now. Now the next video I want to show is how to paint a robin in detail. So have a look at the card over there and you can see the one I mean. Click on that and I'll see you over there very shortly.